All right. Um, welcome to Nettie's Enterprises Product Showcase Fountain Creek Watershed Restoration Project, a case study on bioengineered stream bank stabilization techniques with presenters Sibby Pothin and Dan Baer. Sibby is the CEO of Nettie Enterprises Incorporated. During his last 25 plus years, Sibby has collaborated with numerous engineers, landscape architects, erosion control specialists, and soil scientists, policymakers, contractors, and distributors to design, manufacture, and promote biodegradable products and solutions to soil erosion problems. Dan Baer is a water resource engineer for Matrix Design Group Incorporated. Dan has more than 40 years of water resources experience in both the public and private sector and has worked with various local, state, and federal jurisdictions and agencies. It's a pleasure to have you here, Sibby and Dan. I will now pass the mic over to you guys. All right. So everyone should be able to see our first slide on our Yes, it looks, looks great, Dan. Go for it. OK. Well, I won't uh, go any more into uh, uh, describing who we are. I was uh, on the uh, projects we're going to be talking about today. I was the project manager and the engineer of record on a project we call Bar Farm because the property is owned by a Dr. Barr, a veterinarian in the area. Uh -oh. It's not advancing my slides. There it is. There you go. So the project sponsor was the Fountain Creek Watershed Flood Control and Greenway District. We've done a number of projects for the district in the watershed. Matrix was the lead designer. We work with THK Associates as our landscape architect. The general contractor was Sun Construction a Landscape. Contractor was Total Terrain and Netty Enterprises provided uh, large quantities of erosion control products as you're going to see. Fountain Creek Watershed is about 930 square miles on the, in the uh, south central area of Colorado. It, is tributary to the Arkansas River near Pueblo, Colorado, and extends to the top of Pikes Peak, almost uh, a change in elevation of 10,000 feet. The city of Colorado Springs is a significant portion of the watershed, includes about 22% of uh, the area, and has modified the hydrology in the creek because of return flows and increased runoff. The location of the Bar Farm Channel project is shown there in the lower portion of the watershed. These are the two uh, reaches, the phase one and phase two of the project that is located between I-25 and Overton Road in Pueblo County. You can see the, the proposed design alignment in the orange and the red, and then the underlying uh, pre-project alignment in the, sh the light shades of uh, how the channel had realigned itself. This uh, stretch of the creek is susceptible to uh, flash flooding and is very mobile, it has a very mobile bed of sand and, and small gravel. This is some of the uh, pre-project conditions in places up to a 30 foot high embankment had eroded because of the migration of the creek. Utilities where you can see uh, the line of electrical power poles there on the left side and some uh, gas lines were also exposed because of the migration of the creek. So some of the key design parameters were we need to pass a 100-year flow of over 33,000 CFS with velocities of 15 feet per second. And a, a key design flow was the five-year flow of 7,000 CFS and the bankful flow of 2,900 CFS. Shear stresses for the 100-year flow approach two feet, uh, two pounds per square foot. And the scour depth we designed to was about eight feet for the 100 year flow. The city is going to talk about some of the options for uh, erosion control fabric that were available for the project. 
Right. Thanks, Dan. That was a great introduction of the project. So as Dan mentioned, the design parameters are pretty um, tough and we needed a, a high performance erosion control product to meet these needs. So I just want to list the requirements in here. So number one, the Fountain Creek watershed, they wanted the product to be a 100% natural biodegradable product and hopefully a renewable resource product. Uh, number two, due to the semi-arid environment, the revegetation establishment of the um, vegetation was kind of difficult. So it takes several growing seasons for the vegetation to take root. So we wanted a product that would last like three to six years at least to allow the vegetation to get established. And the third requirement was that since we had a lot of the uh, sand laid in flow, the product we use need to withstand the abrasive forces of the uh, sand laid in flow. And uh, the fourth requirement is obviously the design parameters such as the, uh, the flow velocity, 100 year flow velocity is 15 feet per second. And the 100 year shear stress is two pounds per square foot. They're pretty high numbers. And the fifth requirement is moisture absorption to help with the vegetation growth. And the sixth one is that the product needs to trap sediments because there are a lot of sediments in the flow. And finally, it has to be economical and easy to install. So um, based on these requirements, uh, Dan and his team looked at a lot of products and they finally came down to the conclusion that the Coil Wrap 1200 meets all the requirements and it was selected for the project. So I just want to run down the spec sheets on this slide. As you can see, um, in the middle of the spec sheet, the water absorption is 146%. That meets the specs. The shear stress is five pounds per square foot. It exceeds the two required. And the water velocity is 16 feet per second versus 15 required on the job. And the uh, functional longevity is four to six years, uh, which is more than the three to six years required for the job. And uh, in terms of the, moist, the, the sediment trapping, uh, this product being a double layered fabric with a jute uh, inner layer, with a very tight weaving that absorbs the sediments very well. So uh, essentially the Coil Wrap 1200 is a double layer product with a outer layer of uh, woven coconut in the layer of woven jute. And it comes in uh, a width of 13 feet. The way we used to do the product before was to use uh, one layer of woven fabric and an inner layer of a non-woven blanket. So the disadvantage there was that the woven fabric comes in typically 13 foot widths and the non-woven comes in like eight foot widths typically. So different widths, different lengths, you need too many staples, too many splices. So it is a lot easier to do work with this uh, single product with a double layer with uniform width. And the next slide here just talks about the different attributes of uh, coordinating. It's natural, biodegradable. There's a very high lignin content. So Lignin is basically, uh, don't the next slide please then. The, uh, the lignin basically is the glue-like material that binds the cellulose fiber and natural fibers. So the coconut fiber has about 46% lignin, which is the highest of all natural fibers, which explains why it's very hardy, very tough, that has high tensile strength and lasts uh, three to six years. And also the coconut fiber absorbs water, and it uh, absorbs solar radiation and provides an ideal microclimate for the vegetation growth and eventually it decomposes into a humus-like material, adding nutrients in the process. Uh, next slide, please. So, so in, in summary, this bar farm project used uh, several stabilization techniques. Uh, the number one being the Coil Wrap 1200. They use that for all the soil lifts and for all the high flow areas up to the five year flow mark. And above the five year flow mark, we used uh, the stitched coconut blanket with the Bionet C400B. And we also used uh, large tow wood structures and uh, seeding both right here and anaplant. And we used willow stakes for the, uh, the revegetation of mostly the uh, soil lift areas and it worked out very well. 
Back to you, Dan. Right. So bend protection on the outside of the bends was a key design element here. As uh, Sebi just described, the foundation of the bank protection was large tow wood structures and then a combination of the roach control fabric and then natural vegetation that would come in to uh, stabilize the system for the long term. So this is an overview of phase two of the project, it shows the color coding for the different treatments. Uh, yellow was the upland seed with uh, coir wrap. The uh, green is uh, riparian seeding, which is down closer to the available water supply. It's a different seed mix. And then the uh, willow stakes are shown in the blue and uh, cottonwoods poles were also used in the uh, orange shaded area. So just some general overall quantities for the project. The overall cost for both phases was about 10 and a quarter million dollars. Overall channel alignment involved 11,000 linear feet of the channel, about uh, 22,700 linear feet of soil lifts were installed. That's using the coil wrap 1200 and I'll show you that detail in a little bit. Uh, 197,000 square yards of additional coil wrap was used up to the five year level. That was to address flows that would, would exceed the bank full flows they were frequent enough to need protection, um, but not uh, too unusual to see in the, in the creek. And then in the upper areas, we put in 32,400 square yards of the coconut blanket, and this would be above the five-year level. Totaled about 53.8 acres of seed and soil conditioning that was underneath the, the erosion control blankets. The total of 1,800 Tow wood logs were used, 191,500 willow stakes and 967 cottonwood poles. So to talk a little more in detail about how this was all installed, the foundation logs were basically a lattice work of uh, foundation logs and uh, a, um, uh, <laughs> top logs pinned together with uh, rebar. The root wild logs laid on top provided some roughness out towards the uh, channel side and they were set 15 degrees into the direction of flow. Structure was embedded into the embankment about 26 feet and the logs were a minimum size of 12 inches in diameter. The towards structure provides the long-term bank stability, which underpins the soil lifts that go on top. So this is a detail of the soil lifts. We used uh, two tier and three tier soil lifts about one and a quarter feet in height. And uh, the, the wrap, the uh, soil wrap extended about six feet from the edge. The lifts were uh, placed in the bends. Uh, with a little bit higher uh, elevation to account for super elevation on the water surface. Soil compaction was placed at 95% of standard proctor, and there was a soil amendment that was tilled into the front edge and top of each lift to facilitate growth of the seed. So this is a picture of the completed soil lift with willow stakes that provide additional stabilization. As, as Sibi mentioned, uh, the fabric provides stability for the three to six year period while vegetation is being established. The willow stakes were installed both uh, between and on top and through the soil lifts. And the soil lift was, uh, like I mentioned, one foot above the bank full flow. Again, as Sibi uh, described, uh, Koya Wrap 1200 has certain characteristics that were really beneficial to this installation. Biodegradable, at a high strength to withstand the shear stresses and the abrasive sand laden flows in the creek. And the uh, underlying woven jute layer provided uh, constraint for the bank soils and protects against sunlight and also retains 
moisture. So this is a typical detail for installation of the fabric, trenching on the sides, use of a two foot long wooden wedges, and uh, that's pretty typical installation. So the Quarter Wrap 1200 was installed over the riparian seed up to the five year level using the wooden wedge stakes and the coconut blanket C400B was installed above that level in the upland areas. So here's some pictures of the post project conditions. This is about four months after installation. The vegetation was installed in the spring and this was taken about uh, August. So we got a pretty good start of uh, growth in that first year. So thanks for your attention and appreciate the opportunity to uh, present our project. Thank you very much. And guys, we do have a couple more minutes here. Um, if you want to answer, it looks like we had a, one or a couple of questions come in. I think we only have time for one or two of them. Um, one of them is how do you prove four year functional longevity? What is or what ASTM equivalent test is suggested? That'd be for the uh, fabric. I assume so, yes. Yeah, it's, it, it's uh, the four year, the three to six year longevity is basically known through uh, field experience. The longevity depends on a lot of factors, depends on the environment, depends on the moisture content, uh, the humidity, the soil pH, a lot of factors that are affected. There's no ASTM test to, re to really calculate that, basically field experience. And one thing we found is that if the fabric is exposed to uh, water, if it's under, underwater all the time, it lasts longer. And if it's exposed to the uh, air, not underwater, it also lasts quite some time. When you have uh, recurrent wet and dry uh, variations is when it increases the uh, uh, biodegrad biodegradation. So essentially in choir, biodegradation happens due to microbial action. So when you have microbes uh, acting you know, uh, quicker and faster, the degradation happens faster. Awesome. Thank you, Sibi. Uh, I think we have time for one more question here. Um, was there other funding used for the project besides the landowner? Uh, this was funded by the watershed district completely. The landowner didn't contribute any uh, funding for the project. Okay, awesome, guys. Um, well, with that, I guess we can close this out, but I know Sibby and Dan, and I think Roy as well, will all be in their booth space, which is booth number one, if you have any questions or if you wanna keep the conversation going. Um, we do have a few present, we actually have a good amount of education um, after this, so we have to wrap things up, but I wanna give a big thank you to Dan and Sibby and as well as Nedia um, for your continued support at the conference. Thank you guys so much. Um, if you thank have you. any questions, for Sibby or Dan and Roy, Roy, again, Nedia booth number one, they'll be there answering any questions, um, utilizing their video chat feature, which if you haven't tried that out yet, guys, it's a pretty cool feature that we offer in the expo hall. So I recommend doing so. Um, again, this presentation was worth half a professional development hour. Um, and just so you guys know, for all of our vendor showcases, there's no coupon code required um, to claim your credit. All you need to do is just complete your course evaluation to do so. If you have any questions about that, just email someone at ICA and uh, we can help you out. Uh, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, everyone.